Today I'm going to take you with me on an adventure to get my ALS certification. And for the ones who don't know what that is, it is Advanced Life Support. Have you ever heard of CPR? Something people does when they see someone unconscious in the street, for example, or when they fall unconscious in the floors of a hospital. Well, that's basic life support, BLS. Advanced is when you become the leader of the team and you guide several other treatments, especially in the hospital area. We help to guide the team to rotate, to see that everything is in order, to see that the airway is in order, and to perform a very thorough assessment of a very critical patient. We try to bring them back to life and to keep them alive for as much time as possible until they receive their definitive management. So I'm going to show you some bits here and there, and I'm going to be explaining some other things about the workshop. So see you there. I was staying at Crew in Cheshire and I needed to go to the train station to catch a train all the way going to Runcorn. And as you can see, this is the small little book they give you. They send you through the mail so that you can study. The scenery was really cool. I had never been to a hospital in the UK, so it was actually quite nice heading into there. And it was really impressive seeing their clinical training department with their simulation labs and all the clinical skills that they are able to practice. And our trainers were anesthetists, ER doctors, nurses, a lot of people training ALS, so it was really cool. And now I'm going to tell you how the course actually worked. The UK offers two options, the regular ALS, which is a two-day course, and you have the E-ALS, which is a combined one day of e-learning and one day of a classroom course. So what is the difference in this? Well, technically speaking, there's no difference. You get the exact same certificate. ALS here is valid for four years, and then you have to recertify yourself. The E-ALS allows you to just have to go to on-site for one day. About one month before the training, you'll be given access to a special platform where you will need to do uh, certain classes, see a lot of videos, answer a lot of question banks, and all of this takes about six to eight hours. When you get to the site, you are expected to know everything in the theory, so they will not explain much. It's going to be a hands-on course just to see how well you manage all the practical skills from the ALS and that the theory itself. However, they will be questioning all day long you and your team to see how much knowledge you actually got from the e-learning part. What are the main differences between basic life support and advanced life support? You just learn how to start and do effective CPR while the advanced life support workers get to the scene. So what do you learn in the ALS? Well, it's what follows that, how to take over this unconscious dead person that's on the floor and try to bring him back to life, not only with the chest compressions and the breathing, that's the main component that's gonna be replaced by anything. But now you're going to be able to operate a, an actual manual defibrillator and choose different settings for them. You'll learn how to read an EKG strip in about two seconds and determine if this is a shockable rhythm or if it's not a shockable rhythm and you actually need medication like epinephrine to try to bring the heart pumping back again. You're gonna learn how to do cardioversion for people that are still alive and they need their heart rhythm to go back into normal. You learn about how to do heart pacing for people that are on AV blocks and let's say they have a 25 heart rate and you actually need to pump them back up to 55, 60 while cardiology gets there and try to fix the problem. You will also be trained to intraosseous IO approach uh, which which we really don't learn in medical school. We just learn to do IV access. Uh, but here, in case of emergencies, we learn how to do IO access, which is pretty great, to be honest. We learn about the capnography, how to interpret the CO2 of a patient, how to know if they're breathing well, how to know if they're having any problems in the respiration. It also helps guides us to see if the CPR is being done effectively. And one of the main things that I really, really like, how to help support an airway, how to determine what type of device are you going to place. So is it just something like putting a non-rebreather mask, when to decide between that and when to decide between having to back a person to be able to help them to support their ventilation. How to put an oropharyngeal device or a nasopharyngeal device to keep an airway patent. Um, how to put a superglottic device like an LMA, which is pretty useful to be honest. Uh, we learn how to use the laryngoscope. They tell you that this should be only be done by really advanced airway managers, which is anesthesia or emergency doctors. So back home, um, you usually wouldn't get a cardiac arrest team to be there in the spot. Whoever feels comfortable and knows how to do endotracheal intubation should be able to help. But if you're in a cardiac arrest, you can put an LMA, a laryngeal mask, and this would be very well enough to be able to keep the oxygenation on these patients. And the last huge skill that you really learn very, very well is the ABCDE assessment on a person that is unwell. 
ABCD approach is just a systematic approach on how to diagnose whatever's going on and help and support the person um, to prevent them from falling into a cardiac arrest, pretty much dying. And we get pretty good at that during the ALS. But the thing that they really, really, really focus on is the leadership behind it. If you are being assessed as a leader of the team. When you do all the simulations, you have different people coming in and you need to coordinate them in a very calm and peaceful way, but do it very coordinatedly and doing it very sharp. Like if it was muscle memory, that's the main approach of the ALS, helping you or, or teaching you how to do this. So then how do they actually test you? Um, and then you have two tests at the end of the ALS. You have a written test, an MCQ test. It, mine was about 120 questions and approximately 40 to 50 questions just were just based on interpreting different EKG strips that they put to us in the test. I love that. I really like EKG. I really like emergencies. So for me, that was, that was easy. And then the other set of the questions were on uh, medications, how to approach every situation, how to give antiarrhythmic drugs, when to cardiovert, when to do pacing. It will give you blood gases results for you to interpret. Is this person in acidosis or alkalosis? Is it metabolic? Is it respiratory? Is it compensated? Are you going to give bicarb? Are you going to give oxygen? What are you going to do with this patient? So you have that, that it's written on paper. It takes about one hour. And then you also have a simulation where it's just going to be you. You walk in, you're given a case, and they tell you to simulate it pretty much like acting. And it's a really great experience. And again, if you have the money, you have the time, you have the motivation and energy to do this, I would really advise you to take it. Technically, this should be pretty much the same or at least a very, very similar 80-90% the same as the ACLS from the American Heart Association. You can be an intern, you can be a, a social service doctor, you can actually be just a medical student. And if you're trained on BLS, you can go ahead and do your ACLS there. This is for everyone. This is not only for doctors, this should be for nurses, for paramedics, for any healthcare professional that is actually on the verge of seeing cardiac arrests on their day-to-day -day job. So my final advice is just go ahead and do it. You're going to really enjoy it and it's going to boost your confidence and boost your skills to be able to act fast and act very intelligently and very smart in every kind of emergency situation that you might get on in the emergency room, in the wards, in the operating room, anywhere in the hospital and out of the hospital. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, subscribe, uh, put a comment if you want so that the YouTube algorithm can continue recommending this video to other people like you and I that are interested in this type of skills. You can follow me on socials and you want more information of what I do in my day-to-day -day life or if you have any questions and you want to reach out to me. This is my handle. It's pretty much the same for everything. So take care, have a great day and see you on the next video.